Um, and welcome to Talking Hands live from the greatest watch show on the planet, Salon QP. And it's fair to say that we're pretty accustomed to drinking too much and uh, sitting around talking about watches. We're even used to having a camera pointed at us while we do it. We've Agreed. done a few of these for the site. Um, but normally we have the alchemy of a bit of time and video editing on our site to try and sort of cover up the uh, lack of watch knowledge. <coughs> Uh, tonight we don't have those, we're live, <laughs> and so we're running on a combination of blind luck and this rather tasty uh, whiskey. Uh, if you put the ludicrous name aside, this is 3D whiskey, it's quite tasty. The man's in the room, careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, I don't know if you know this, it launches on Monday, we're actually drinking, I believe, the first bottle. And you know what's best about this? You scan this code, you send it in, and you get the holder for the bottle made for you out of 3D printing, no less. They're making 504 bottles of it. Fantastic. We've, we've got the first. You guys had to bring your own. That should have been made clear to you um, on the invite. The first piece that I wanted to display for you this evening is something that's got me pretty bent out of shape, forgive the pun. This is the Vachon Constantin, 1972 Prestige, no less. It is. Strange looking, right? Yep. Now, the interesting piece about this is they made this watch in response to getting an award from the French government, no less, don't you know? Impressive, right? And they came out with something that actually replicates the golden ratio, something that you've, of course, not heard of, not having been particularly educated. I own a Cheshire Le Coutre reverse, so I know something yeah. about the golden ratio. Okay, there's no golden ratio there, but we'll get to that later, don't worry. In any case, guys, so this is a lovely, lovely piece. It has, if I'm not mistaken, the thinnest manual wind automatic movement on the market at 1.64 mils, which should impress you and the other geeks in the audience as well. But what I particularly like about this is that it's still fresh. It's still incredibly different. It's still incredibly novel and still very challenging. So you look at the, um, the dial as well as something that really nails it for me too. Um, and this little chevron motif, which is discreet, elegant, nice. And if I had to actually pick between this one and another model that they offer, they have a 40 piece limited edition called the boutique version, which is black on white. So you get a really sharp, strong contrast between the two. And I think a snip at 35K. What do you think? <laughs> um, I, well, look, I tell you what, I, it's pretty rare that you see truly great design coming out of the 1970s, I would say. Um, and uh, to me, at least, this is not one of those designs. Now, look, don't get me wrong, it's a nice looking oh, there's, piece. Oh, there's it's, more, it's you're going to add something an, else. It's a Thank nice you. looking That's great. piece, and it comes from one of the few brands, you can count them on, on, on one hand, with truly sort of unimpeachable pedigree and, and, and history, etc. We agree. Um, but for me, it's just, it's just not that special. I think you've got, so if you've got a Patek Philippe Calatrava here, here you've got maybe the line between simple and elegant, yeah. the tipping point into sort of dull and slightly forgettable. I think your watch is just, just the other side, just the wrong side of it. Yeah, I think That's we're going to be asking think. the audience about that later, okay? But we'll put well, that on Well, let's ask the audience. Guys. Who's with Eric? Who's with me? Yeah. Who votes for the Vachon? Well, actually, no. Let's, before we do, Sorry. let's let me show them what I've brought to the party. Really? Yeah. Do you have something else? Because I've got something truly special. Well, why don't you show us then? Right. So the first watch I wanted to show you guys was this. This is um, the, the Zenith Striking Tenth Lightweight Edition, um, and the movement itself is interesting, not least because it was built into Zenith's own watches, but also because it powered the uh, the Rolex Daytona for the best part of 20 years, right? We agree, and happy we were. So, so it's already steeped in history and, and, and pedigree, um, but with the, the regular striking tenth, Zenith added, a, 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 I think, a wonderful complication, which is the um, ability to measure one-tenth of a second, right? So you can, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, no, it's, it's tough to see, but the, um, the second's hand, I've just started the chrono movement, the second's hand is now going around measuring one-tenth of a second. This is important for the race to the bathroom, right? Indeed, okay, good. or to the wine cellar. Very important. So, so you've already got an interesting watch, and then with this, this is a limited edition, I think it's limited to 100 pieces. Um, 100 pieces, thank you. They've gone to work on making it as light as they possibly could. They've, they've done all sorts of things. Um, but this watch is only 40 grams. Now, to have a Can feel. Just, just to put that in perspective, I mean, you've probably, you've probably bought cocaine in, in those sorts of quantities, right? <laughs> it's, it's, I, I don't, I don't deal is. in G's, I deal in keys, but anyway, okay, yes, go ahead. So, <laughs> I mean, it's astonishing what they've managed to do, right? Yeah, so you've got it's so, so they've completely reworked the movement. It's titanium and silicon. Um, the case, as you can see, is carbon fiber, um, and the inner really the inner <laughs> structure um, is, is aluminium. And they've, they've sort of hollowed out the lugs and, well, and the effects. This, this reminds a little bit of Linda Verlin, no? It does. It's yeah, Linda Verlin did a similar thing with their, their Spider Speed. Um, so I, I just 
I, I love it because it, it's, it's sort of the best of old and new in my mind, right? You've got all the history and the pedigree of the El Primero Chrono. Um, you've got, you know, the, the, the design cues like the black, um, grey and, um, and blue subdials. Yeah. But they're brought bang up to date, right, with all this light technology. I think it's, I think it's stunning. I think it's fantastic. Um, so, I think maybe folk can probably guess what I'm about to say, but... Um, I find it quite overblown. I think the fact that you picked up on the color of these subdials, for instance, well, I can't see those subdials anymore. And part of the reason I can't see them anymore is because there's so much else going on. This whole skeletonized effect and this idea of digging out, almost eviscerating a watch is something that I just fail to understand. So if you have the beauty of an old Primero uh, movement, which I have had in an old Ibel of mine, 1911 chrono. Oh, and part, of the, part of the pleasure of that, for, of that for me was knowing it was inside. I didn't have to know everything that was going on in the inside and outside of the watch. So if you asked me for something, I just would have liked it to be a little bit quieter, a little bit calmer, a little more subdued. <laughs> Let's show. Stop, stop tearing us apart. I think you're out of your mind. I think that's stunning. OK, can I show can I, can I ask the audience? Oh. Who's with me? Who's with Eric on the first round? Who's with me first? Listen, guys, if you want to get out of this room alive, the Who's next vote is for me. <laughs> Who's with Eric? Who's with me? Yeah. Ta da! <laughs> Ed, two. Ed, two, Ed, two Brutus. Brutus. My wife just voted with you. I love My it. My wife is in the audience. She just voted with you. This from a brand, I think, that you and I came into contact not too long ago, but that impressed us straight out of the box. So if you remember, we went through the Zurich Weltzeit. We had the world timer that they, that they made. And we also went through the Nomus, yeah, keep pouring, that's good. Um, and also the uh, Nomus Dunkel Automat, I think. Our friend Timothy Barber, just before we started, came on stage and whispered in my ear, you're supposed to mix it with water. It's very strong. <laughs> He's right. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's very strong. No, we can't see that anymore, but it's OK. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we love Nomus. Great. All right. OK, so Nomus, great stuff. but. Look, here's, here's the point, guys. Nomos have really kicked it up into the high end. So if they offered value down at the, say, uh, I think it was something between two to four, something like this range, they kicked this up to, we're operating in the 12 to 14,000 pound yeah. range now with the Lambda, which is this piece here, and we've got the interestingly named Lux. One of the things and this that really brought this together was finally the somewhat brittle design of Nomos that I've, I've criticized somewhat in the past is particularly with the world timer, I think comes together really beautifully in these pieces. So you're talking high-end movements, you're talking mm. an, almost, an almost stretched elegance. There's something really tight with it. And my favorite being particularly this land. I mean, look at that, 84-hour power reserve, elegant, paired back. Bottom line is they are ready to punch above their weight. They have arrived and they are high-end. And more importantly, for all the couples in the audience, these are the him and her uni brand offering. Honey, don't get any Is that good? Is. <laughs> so look, I love Nomos, and I love Nomos' design. Um, I think they've got a beautiful, uh, simple aesthetic. Very, very impressed with Nomos brand, always have been. Um, I guess just two things to say. First of all, you've cheated, because you brought two watches, so you should be disqualified for this <laughs> round <laughs> straight off the back. I'll leave now. <laughs> um, but I, no, I mean, I guess, look, they're lovely. My, my only concern is this brings Nomos into a whole new price bracket, right? This, this is a whole new, and I'm, I'm, I'm it's not multiples, sure. It's three, four times. I'm not sure if you can stretch the Nomos brand that far. And the, the, the thing that I have always loved about Nomos is what incredible value they represent. And, and, you know, once you get into this sort of price range, you're, you're up against all sorts of things. Like right? Arlang and Zona? Yeah, all sorts of things. So it makes that... He doesn't know who I'm talking about. It <laughs> makes that a little bit more complicated. But, but can I say something? You don't, I, think, you don't think that you can offer value at the higher end? I'm, means... not saying you, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying it becomes a lot harder. There are a lot more things to take into consideration. It's a, it's a slam dunk, you know, at the lower price range. And this is... This, it'd be it's... very interesting to see what happens. But okay. It, so we'll judge on its own merits. Indeed. Now. Are you going to whip something out? I'm going to whip something Not out. Not that, by the no, way. No, we'll do the watch. OK, that's good. So um, I've just criticized Nomos for being a little bit too pricey. Now I would like to show you a watch, which I think costs more than, than the two, our two cars put together. This is, now let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. <coughs> Urwerk? Yeah, Schatzi, that's uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Urwerk, um, UR210. Um, I just think, so, you know, if you looked at the zenith that I was just talking about and, mm -hmm. and, and then said to yourself, oh, well, you know, all they've done is change the materials, that's not real innovation, I would say, first of all, you're wrong. Um, but second, I mean, look at this. 
right? I can't miss it. This is, this looks like nothing else. I'm struggling to even call it a watch. It's like a micro machine. That's what it sort of feels like, right? And it doesn't even bother with things like a conventional hour hand or, a, no. You've got these, um... Tell me, how the hell does it work? I mean, can you, can you even read the time, by the way? Of course well, you can sorry, read the time. We'll get to that later. Of course you can important. read the time. It's uh, it's it's coming up to ten past seven, right? Thanks to the other watches that we have on the table, yes, we no. can know. <laughs> so you, so I'm, I'm I'm sure most of you guys have seen this, but you've got these three barrels here okay. that rotate, and and the um, the number that you can see in the frame here is is the hour, and then down below here you've got the minute indicator. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've taken the conventional watch design and just reinvented it completely. But they've done it in a way that I think still looks fantastic. It's easy to throw away the old and do something new, but not have the results look particularly good. This, I think, looks astonishing. It's awesome. It's inventive. But that's not why I chose it. Oh, wow. I chose it because it has this fantastic complication. I think it's, I, again, please do correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but I think it's the only mechanical watch that does this. It, it, it measures the efficiency of the winding mechanism at any one time. So it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera, but, but it's up there, there right, the top yeah? left-hand corner. A little green to red gauge. You've got a sort of green to red, red gauge, which shows you, um, based on the last two hours of you wearing it, how efficient the winding is going. Right? So, so if I wore it, it'd be in the red. If you wore it, it'd be in, it'd the, be green, in the green. Right? Mm -hmm. and, if, you know, <laughs> and if, God forbid, you need to make an adjustment, you flip it over, yeah. and here on the back, you've got the... Uh, uh, tricky yeah, to see. Guys, go yeah, go, go downstairs that. and have a closer look at it after the, um, the show. Um, you can make your adjustments here. Now, I just think that is fantastic. <clears throat> so you mentioned a, a key word, I think, which, it, Jesus, it's heavy. Um, no wonder it needs a crown, oh, as large as my thumb, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I think here's where I come out. You mentioned efficiency. Um, I'm not sure that you can handle day-to-day -day life, let alone a watch telling you how efficient you are or are not being, okay? So you might want to think but about that for a second. But it's the cleverness behind that. Yes, it's a right look. It's a right. It, it's and a it radical. It looks awesome at the same time. Look, okay. So it challenges. It's a radical departure from an engineering perspective. I take my hat off. I take my boots off. My pants off. It's fantastic. It's good stuff. There are children in the audience. Okay, no, no, no uh, Tim. Oh no. Anyway, um, so he, here's my issue with it. It complicates in the same way that I showed you a Vachel Constantin 1972 Prestige, is because it's simple. You don't have to complicate the thing to be fascinated by it. And this is something that, quite frankly, we see an awful lot of going around selling QP for the moment, is the only way to innovate is to complicate. I think that's crap. Simplify. Show me that you can do that well, and then I'll be impressed. In I'd like to present you guys with the Jeger Le Coutre, not the Jaeger Le Coutre, but the Jeger Le Coutre. Good pronunciation. Duo face. Yeah. Ultra thin. Yeah. OK? So watch for all season, watch for all moves. The fact that we talk about changing bracelets during the day is a, a constant discussion, right? Everybody wants something that's going to reflect where they are, when they're at it, and how they feel. This piece does it all for you. It's all contained in one body. This I love. So while we're looking at a number of different complications, and by the way, I actually can't even count the number of complications you've showed me tonight, what I like about this puppy is, in, in essence, it's a mood complication. Feel good, feel light feel dark, feel sober, you've got the answer with you in this piece. Mm -hmm. And all for the bargain price of 6750 Not the, sorry, what was it, 90-something uh, thousand of the last piece? Just, How, just a shade over 90 grand. Sorry, so 92,000 for the other. 6750 night and day, up or down, you get this. And once again, pairing back, this is not about complicating, it's not about eviscerating, it's not about ripping back the skin, it's about simply offering people the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Like Jay-Z and R. Kelly, but different. Um, he, he didn't get that, he doesn't like R&B or that kind of music. It's <laughs> I, I, God, this, it pains Please. me to say this, particularly in public, um, but I, I agree with you, it, the river, it's a lovely, it's a lovely piece. Do you want to touch? I do want to touch. <laughs> it is an absolutely, Beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, I mean, the reverse is a classic, right? I, 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 most, it's one of my favorites, and I think most people who are into watches have it on their list somewhere and, and, um, and respect it. And I think, you know, in this industry, things like words like timeless and iconic get thrown around a lot, right? This is one of the few watches that actually lives up to those adjectives properly. So, Amen. absolute due respect to the reverse. But, all right, Shit. there is a but, there is a but. 
So if you know <coughs> your, your, a little bit about how this watch came about, a little bit about the history, and I'm sure most of the audience does, yes. you'll Hold know up. that the reason that you can flip the face over on the reverso is to protect the face from polo mallets, right? Yes. Not to pander to your bipolar disorder. <laughs> and that, as a purist, that's my only problem with this watch. Really? I, I just think it, 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 it's, it's just deviated slightly from the essence of what the reverso is all about. This is, is, is stunning. And I guess that's the last thing I'd say about this. I think Gégère Le Coutre have a problem on their hands because they released the tribute to 1931, the ultra-thin reverso that, that you're wearing, which I think is the reverso in perfect form. I don't see how you can better it. And they haven't bettered it with this. Okay, so so one just one, one thing to be clear about. So the tribute to 1931 had sword hands. This has syringe hands. Yes, this is so the, you've Fagliano. Got the Fagliano. So is it the Fagliano that you like, or is it the tribute? You're off piece. We're focusing on this. <laughs> okay. All right. So what are you going to come back at me with? Because well, I think that's pretty impressive. No. It is no. I, but but what they've done is they've taken a design that I think was perfect 80 years ago, and they've tweaked it and they've tried to do something new with it, and that's absolutely fine. But you're never going to get um, anywhere good if you've already done such a great job to start off with. So my last choice is completely at the other end of the spectrum. It, com it literally throws the conventions of watch design out the window. Bring it on. Right? We're not tweaking here. We're starting from scratch. Come on, let's do it. Here we go. I give you, as my last choice of the evening, the Hussars Type 3. Oh, my goodness. Right? They're even clapping. Yeah. <laughs> So, so um, those of you who were here uh, two years ago, I think, will have seen uh, Benoit, who's a, is a fellow uh, waffle-eating Belgian... Vive la Belgique, indeed. that's all I can say. Um, ...introduce the brand and his first watch, the Series 1, I, I remember. Uh, two years ago. And I, you know, I was blown away then. So what they did the Type 3, they did three things, I think, okay. that, that, that are impressive. So first of all, they took... Um, what he's done is he's, he's sort of melded the sapphire and, and the discs by putting oil between the two, ref, um, refractive oil that gives the optical illusion that the sapphire and the, um, and, and the face are sort of one piece when they're yeah. not, okay? And the, the, the movement is below it, and there's no contact between the two. It works on the basis of magnets, as, okay. as, as Noodle said. Yes, because right? he knows what he's talking about. And the, and the last, the third thing, is there's no crown. There's no crown at all. So why, is it, why is this doing it for you? Why is this the... It's doing it for me. I guess a bit like the Urwerk. Um, it's, it's being courageous and ballsy and just being, bringing genuine invention, right? Okay. This, this industry is all too short of real invention. No, they start right? resorting is... to tricks like that. But... So this is something genuinely new. You haven't seen this before. It's Great. clever, it's ballsy, it's courageous. And he's managed to do it in a form factor that, that looks good, right? Because yeah. it's easy to create new stuff that, that actually doesn't, aesthetically doesn't look that great. Um, but the final thing about it is, and you'll, I think you'll like this, it's cheap. It's cheap. It's 23,000 euros. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's tw for, for yeah? a watch that you will okay, never for... see on anyone else and which is bringing something completely new and different to the... Um, to the table. All right, so look, uh, I mean, I, this is not going to sound a little bit dull for the audience that's gathered here before us that's looking for, you know, fireworks. Well, they've got and, used to it over the last 15 yeah, minutes. Well, so. I mean, but they've fallen asleep, actually. Most of them grown beards, but anyway. Um, but I actually agree. I think that what you've pointed out is right, and it should be acknowledged as such. This is genuinely special. It's genuinely it's awesome, innovative. Right? Yeah. No, 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 it's, and it's actually fine. Now, apart from the fact that it looks somewhat like the dashboard of a 60s Italian car, <laughs> It's rocking my world, and it's good. You, of all people, should appreciate quirky Belgian design. Yes, indeed. After a few left blondes, we appreciate almost anything, even you. But um, I think my point about this is I just don't want to think about come maintenance time, come how you actually take care of the piece, because we forget about this. All the stuff that we've gone through, there is a question of how long and how much you're actually going to be paying sure, to make sure, sure the piece sure. is running through. I mean, I think he builds it with an ETA movement, obviously heavily modified. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. He's here. We'll okay. go downstairs and ask him. All right. Well, look, listen. So uh, we can end, I think, or wrap up in a place of agreement? No. I want to vote first. Last oh. round. Okay. Sorry. So, guys, who thinks this is a genuinely special piece? Versus your reverser. Ah. Who won that round? I'm sorry. Okay, guys. So here's what you've got. We're going to be clear. Who's with me? And, and who's with the reverso? Oh, mm. You're not allowed to vote. You work for Gégère Le Coutre. <laughs> 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 to 
Yes, you. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you here tonight. It was a pleasure speaking with you. It was a pleasure seeing these beauties because I think all of them deserve recognition. And uh, until the next time, wear your watches in good health, folks. Good night. Cheers. Cheers to you.